Karma is such a bitch. So for context, if you haven't seen my last video, go watch just like half of it. Get the gist and come back. You guys, <laughs> after that whole ordeal, I had a decision to make. Was I gonna go back? Was I gonna go do this like weird paid gig situation I was invited to? Ugh. I was talking to my therapist and she's just like, okay, if you're gonna do any of this, which like you're fully capable of, I have two rules for you. Number one, make sure you go with somebody you know. Don't go alone to any of these sorts of things. And number two, don't go into any sort of like back room situation. I'm like, got it. <laughs> So I decide it took a lot of time and consideration and a lot of meditation and reflection um, to decide whether or not I was gonna go do this weird gig. We called him Sam the last video. Is that Sam guy gonna be there? Don't wanna deal with him again. Worried about confrontation. So Wednesday rolls around and the whole day I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I'm like a Wii Sports tennis match, right? Just bang, 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 bang. bang. You know in Wii Sports, in Wii Tennis, when you get like, really close to your opponent <coughs> sorry i just had a muffin and you guys are like neck and neck at the net and it neck and neck at the net neck and neck and the, oh my god you guys ah and the ball is just it's just like bam, 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 bam. that is how my decision process was going on wednesday i mean in the morning i had told tanner i was just like i'm going 30 minutes after that i was in my car like nah i'm not going by lunchtime i was like actually no i'm going and then i like took a nap and i woke up from the nap and i was like no who do I think I are? Run around leaving Scott. Decided to go and I went alone, which is rule number one that my therapist had for me. So, because I thought, you know what? If I feel uncomfortable, who is stopping me from literally screaming and running out of the door and never coming back? And worried about. Oh my God, I got it. <sighs> Talk about a girl boss. I walk in and I don't see him. I'm like, Okay, interesting. I'm sure he's here, but I don't see him. I'm clearly the only girly swirly there. I'm clearly the youngest one there. The typical rundown. This guy comes up to me, shakes my hand. He's like, hi, uh, Sam couldn't be here. And so I'm taking over for him. So sorry if things are like off a little bit. And I'm thinking, whew, but still I'm like nervous because I'm like, I don't know this man. There are lots of mans. Pervert guy walked in. I was like, fuck, now I'm dealing with Mr. Pervert man. So I'm still nervous, but I'm like, okay. Sam is not here. And then the show starts. And this guy goes up on stage. He's like, yeah, it's a shame Sam couldn't be here, but at least I know he's with us, you know? He's just down the street, you know? And everybody starts laughing. And I'm thinking, down the street? Oh my God, he's down the street. And from this nightclub, the end of the street, is the police station and the way that it took me a while for all of this to register i was like wait i mean obviously we know i'm really good at misinterpreting things maybe i misinterpreted that joke but if i heard him correctly a plus b equals the police station is sam at the police station he does his bit you know sex sex uh -uh, you know man man sex and the next guy goes on stage he's like uh doesn't it suck when your best friend gets arrested my man was arrested at this point i'm howling laughing because i'm like karma is the biggest bitch you will ever meet i don't know what he was arrested for i don't know if he was just in there for like a little check-in i don't know but all i have to say you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So that whole story took a turn I was not expecting it to, but I just, I needed you guys to know because we all became very emotionally involved in my journey here. And I just need you to know what happened to Sam. Um, but anyways, I like did my little set and like people were like laughing. I was like, okay, all right. Cause I made some adjustments from last week, right? I did my homework. And then after the show, which by the way, I got paid $5, so might be dropping out of school soon. In the works with some Netflix executives. I am, you know, things are things are happening, right? Big things are happening. So then after the show, this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, we're doing this like other big comedy show on Friday. He's like, you should totally come check it out. Meet these other comics. I'm like, wow, this is networking in the flesh. I'm like, okay, sounds great. 
And so then I leave and I'm like, oh my God, I went alone and I'm about to go to this other thing alone. It's like, ah. And so Friday rolls around, right? And mind you, my parents don't know that any of this is happening. This whole thing is a challenge for me in itself but for me to try to not tell my parents something it's one of god's greatest battles for me it's tough there is one secret that i think i've kept from my parents successfully since fifth grade it was something when i was in washington dc in fifth grade we walked across the street when the like cross walk sign thing wasn't on yet like we just went for it i think the term is jaywalking and i just remember my teacher going guys don't tell your parents we did that and i was like it's gonna be hard but but i can do it so i have not told my parents that but it is when i tell you it is still it's a it's a battle i have to fight every day when i wake up trying not to tell my parents that i'm literally going to a nightclub with old pervert men at night with nobody <laughs> is even harder <sighs> so friday rolls around right and my parents are getting a little bit suspicious because you know usually if i go out and about they don't ask where i'm going right because they're like we don't need to know whatever so the first week i did this i was like oh like won't be home for dinner and they were like okay like whatever you're doing like have fun i was like okay great and then the next week i was like you know going out again they were like okay yeah yeah you just you do whatever and then last week was we had a double whammy because i went to the i did the show on wednesday and then i was going to this weird thing on friday wednesday i come downstairs you know i'm trying to like look put together right look put together feel put together and so my mom was like you look nice I'm like yeah i'm i'll be i'll <laughs> won't be home for dinner she's like oh okay like i can i can hear it in her voice we're getting a little bit Hmm. So then I leave very quickly and then Friday rolls around. Same thing. Walk down the stairs. You look nice. Where are you going? I was like, oop, what happened to not asking where I'm going? <laughs> and this was really hard because I was really scared. I was really scared because where I was going was like kind of far away. It was like 30 minutes away. It was like raining outside. My windshield wipers are like broken. It's like a pretty big place that I was going to. Like I knew there was going to be like a lot of people, like lots of alcohol, lots of like walking through scary dark parking lots. I'm like... I am, my heart is bumping and thumping, okay? This could be, this could be the last time I see my parents. This could be the night that I get kidnapped. Um, but for some reason, I was willing to take that risk once again. Oh my God, we've lost another rhinestone. Everybody say rest in peace, rest in peace. It's okay, queen. You had, you lived a great life. Okay, I'm driving and it's dark and it's pouring rain and my windshield wipers aren't wiping and I almost got into a car accident like 20,000 different times, but nevertheless, I persisted and I tried to park as close to the bar as I could because I was like I the last thing I want to do is walk alone at night with my long blonde hair and my big long legs I'm like we don't need to do that right on Wednesday when I did the show and the guy invited me he's like just we'll put you on the list just ask them to look for you on the list and you can get in for free I was like okay so i walk into this bar this lady stops me and she's like do you have a ticket because this was like a full-blown comedy show like 15 dollars tickets lots and lots and lots of people and lots and lots of beer 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 stage with lights and cool lighting and like lots of different acts and like two hours long and so she's like do you have a ticket and i'm like oh god here we go no i should i should be on the list <sighs> do you know how hard it was to get that sentence out of me the worst thing that could happen here is that they're even there there uh, the list doesn't exist and so she proceeds to let me know that there is no list and immediately i'm like oh that's okay and i'm ready to just walk out and go right back home so she goes behind this little curtain into a back room and she gets this guy the guy comes out it's the guy from wednesday he's like oh my god she's a comedian come on in she's a part of the gang and i'm thinking oh my god i just wow papa paparazzi i was like i wow and the lady had no idea what to do she's like running after me with this like bracelet she's like are, like are you performing i'm like no and the guy's like no she's just like she's a comedian she's really cool i'm like oh my god you're like 50 years old and i'm like literally 12 ah and he's like do you want to come in the back room and meet the other comics sure <laughs> So we were two for two. <laughs> so not only was I alone, nobody knew I was there. I mean, my sister knew, but for context, my sister lives 
on the other side of the country in New York City. So what was she going to do for help, right? Within 30 seconds of being there alone at night, I end up in a back room with other comics who are all men. Whoops. But I go back there and this guy's like, yo guys, like this is Jasmine. Like she's super cool. There's a lot of like, hi, yes. What was your name? I Say that again. Tom. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, hi. Yeah. What was your name? Eric. Eric. J- Jasmine. J- Jasmine. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Lots of that happening. No worries. Nothing crazy happened in the back room. One guy was chugging kombucha. The other guy was taking shots. So one balanced out the other and I was the nice median in the room. There's kombucha in- involved. I'm. That's a sign from him that I'm in the right space, right? So after my little meet and greet moment, like I'm going to go find my seat. Which, okay, they were drinking kombucha in the back. And so I'm like, they must have kombucha here. And so I go up to the bar, right? And already I'm like, wow, loving my first bar experience. I'm like y'all got kombucha he was like no great thank you so much sorry about that so not sure where the kombucha was found how that came to be in the back maybe they provided their own but i really was i was bummed everybody had a drink in their hand i'm like what am i gonna do just like sit here yeah and that's what i did and i thought this whole thing was going to be outside and it's getting cold here in oregon so i like bundled up i had my fun new doc martens on that i got on depop for 50 dollars. aren't these the cutest fucking things you've ever seen anyways but no it was inside and it was inside this very hot bar with a lot of very hot like temperature wise hot people not a lot of hot attractive people but a lot of just like hot people a lot of warmth radiating within the room and so i'm sweating but i'm like what am i gonna do take off my vintage ll bean fleece that was my dad's in the 80s in the middle of this bar no (laughs) don't want to be mistaken for a fucking stripper okay so then i sit there and this guy is sitting in front of me and we are rocking some long locks this man our friend was rocking some long thick blow-dried locks this man was the definition of locks of love okay and he was doing that thing where you know when you're like sitting behind somebody on a plane or at like a a theater or something they become involved in your space right i mean his hair was pretty much my length and so he was doing that thing where he's sitting behind me and when he's laughing he does a lot of this Right? There's a lot of this happening. So I am now in a committed relationship with Mr. Locks of Love over here. It was quite the scent that reeked from his locks. It was a combination of head and shoulders and cigarette smoke. And if you're wondering what that smells like, So it was not the cutest scent happening, but it was strong. This was Bath and Body Works strong, okay? This was no Chanel number no. 5. This was a full-blown Bath and Body Works level potency happening in front of me. And about halfway through the show, some like the comedian on stage had like asked some question, right? Similar to the hot dog question from la- okay you just if you know you know some guy like way in the back of the bar had an answer for the question and so mr locks of love let's say let's say you're me right mr locks of love turns his head right to look at the guy in the back of the bar who's answering the question but meanwhile he gets a he does a little double take of miss jazzy jazz over here he goes <laughs> Besides the hair whipping, he literally did that. He literally turned, stared me dead in the eyes for like six seconds, and I did not break eye contact. I was just like, and then slowly looked away. It was the most awkward thing. But so now I'm like, okay, I've got to look out for Mr. Locks of Love. We've, we've encountered a threat. I just, something inside of me was just telling me that Mr. Locks of Love was going to want to talk to me. And I did not want to talk to Mr. Locks of Love, okay? I did Locks of Love. Well, I did something different than Locks of Love because, like, 
controversy and shit but when I like cut my hair and accidentally got a mullet I donated my hair like we've been there done that mess around oh and I forgot an important part halfway halfway through he starts to like put his arm that on like empty chairs next to him right and a little bit while I, while later his hand starts to go like this and I'm like if this man gets within four and a half inches of my giant knee i will cause a riot and the show will be stopped i will cause an outbreak so large that i will become banned from this entire town and so he's getting awfully close but before he can get close enough there's the exchange of comedians and there's a break in the show and so locks of love just decides to turn around and he starts to open his mouth and before i'm getting tangled in my microphone and before he could even open his mouth you know i'm sitting there all bitched up ready i have been prepping i was ready to to verbally give this man a restraining order for me i'm like i am so ready i'm so ready i'm so ready and i'm not even i'm not even paying attention to the comedians on stage because i am just waiting for the moment for locks of love to turn around so i can just give him the zim zam and this is getting me riled up and so i'm sitting here literally literally like this just ready i'm so ready i've never been more ready for anything in my entire life so he turns around you know willow smith whips his hair back and forth he starts to open his mouth and before i even see a glimpse of like you know his soft palate i just hit him with <clears throat> don't fucking talk to me Oh. And with the power of the English words, this man closed his mouth and turned right back around. I'm like, yeah. Don't mess with Jazzy Jazz. <laughs> And so soon after the show ended and I bolted out of there as fast as I could, I tried to like say good job to the comedians. I was just like, oh my God, like great job. Like, oh my God. Yeah. See you around. See you around. Yeah. Nice. So nice meeting you. So nice meeting you. No. No. I bolt out the door and proceed to accidentally walk back to my car via a dark back alley, not via the lit parking lot. So that was my bad. <laughs> I got back home and my parents were still awake, surprisingly. I go into the room and I'm like, hey. And, you know, they're both sitting in bed with, like, their tea. Like, mechanical twin dolls. They just kind of, like, turn their heads to look at me. And they're like, where'd you go? And I'm like, oh, I just, I had an event to go to. I could tell they wanted to ask more questions, but before they could, I was already upstairs brushing my teeth. I zoomed out of there so fast, and so I'm running out of excuses. I'm running out of escape plans. Right when I said escape plan, I just remembered that I have this fire escape ladder that I need to set up. I should probably do a little practice run. My room is on a bridge. It's complicated, okay? It's not as fancy as it sounds. But basically, if I were to jump out of my window when there was a fire, oh, we are just... We are full blown free falling. Okay, yeah, gonna do that later. Well, I don't have time today, so let's just hope there's not a fire today. I will only talk about doing stand up and all that sort of stuff if anything crazy happens again. I feel like I've kind of exhausted the topic. So, long story short, face your fears. Um, stranger danger isn't a real thing. Um, so go out there, get in somebody's car, say yes to new opportunities, no opportunity to, and whatever your therapist says, they're wrong and do the opposite. <laughs> so to my therapist, this is my formal apology. It won't happen. I actually, well, actually I can't guarantee it won't happen again, but I'm, I'm going to try my best to make sure it doesn't happen again or it's not going to be a regular. Th well, I, <sighs> I did, I tried. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go explode, have my sandwich, have some kombucha too. Also, I put, I hung up my violin. I'm back on, I'm back on my classical violin bullshit. So I'd be worried if I were you. Okay, I think that's it. This was just a quick little update, although it probably wasn't that quick. Um, it's giving football jersey. It's giving Tom Brady in the worst way. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, actually, wait. Um. Uh, Sorry, I just have to, you know, oop, jump scare. Oop, didn't mean to scare you. Okay, I'm done. Okay, okay. <sighs>